After playing the Modern Warfare franchise for essentially two years, Black Ops 6 released a couple days ago. And needless to say, it's taken a little bit of adjusting to kind of improve and get better. But after playing for quite a few hours, I think it is very clear that there are certain things that you can do in Black Ops 6 that are immediately going to improve you in game. It's going to make you a better player, raise your kill death ratio, and honestly, make you enjoy the game more. So that is exactly what this video is going to be. 10 tips to immediately improve like literally as soon as i finish this video you guys are going to be like yeah this actually made me better at the game so without further ado let's get into one that you can do extremely quickly so the reason why i'm putting this first front and center is because when i downloaded the game and started playing these settings had changed for me they didn't save from the beta and they didn't save for modern warfare 3 and they were making the game feel horrible for me and they are all in controller settings so the first thing that i always have on is a tactical button layout this puts all my movement into my thumbsticks on top of this i have a higher horizontal sensitivity than vertical this is sick because players in this game move faster horizontally sliding diving things like that whereas vertically they do not and also i find having a lower vertical sensitivity helps me get headshots um, now, I don't have controller vibration in my controller, so this normally you're going to want off, but it's up to you. And then dead zone inputs. These were reset for me. So these were all the way up to 15 on my right and left stick, and it was making my aim feel way, way, way off. If you want to test your dead zone, you're going to do this, do this. Mine says zero, so I don't have to set them at all, but you're going to want to make sure you set them to whatever numbers you are testing for. And also... My left and right triggers had dead zones built into them as well, which makes that feel horrible on top of that. As far as aiming goes, you are going to want to make sure that your advanced aiming settings are set to dynamic. Mine was set to standard by default. It does not feel right. I have mine set to one, but dynamic is going to make it so that your aim assist actually feels better and it is stronger. It's a huge buff to your aim assist, if you will. Then you're, of course, going to want to make sure you have target aim assist on and then movement. This is another incredibly important one. You're going to want to make sure you have tactical sprint assist on. This is going to make it so that whenever you move your thumbstick, you are automatically tactical sprinting and it makes omni movement so much easier. On top of that, when you go into show more, make sure your sprint assist delay is down to zero. That means it always works as well as always sprinting sideways and always sprinting backwards on as well. And one thing that I do have on is corner slicing, and I'm not sure whether or not I like that or not yet. And then finally, tap to slide. This is going to make Omni movement easier as well. But when you have tap to slide on, you tap to slide and you hold the dive. Pretty straightforward. And then when you're always sprinting, it makes it so that these are always available and makes Omni movement so, so much easier. So there are a lot more settings like turning motion blur off and things along those lines. And the one other one that you may be wondering about is my field of view. I play on 110 field of view. I started on 115 in this game and it just felt a little bit too far away, a little bit too hard to snap onto target. So I'm back to 110. So now let's look at loadouts. As far as your loadouts goes, there's a couple sections I actually want to look at. Starting off with weapons. What are the best weapons in the game to use? Well, I think it's a little early to just pick out one or two or even like best attachments. So I will have a video coming out that is kind of like the top five loadouts or something along those lines. But right now, the ones that stood out to me are the AS Val, uh, the KSV, and those are pretty much the two that I thought were looking really, really good. Uh, but aside from that, we'll have other videos in the future. As far as best items to use, the only one that really stands out again is stim shots. When I don't have stim shots, I really can't play this game very well. I really recommend giving stim shots a shot. It's going to allow you to get into more gunfights more quickly and stay alive longer because you're going to have more health. Also, these auto regen... And on top of that, if you use something like Tactical Expert, it's going to give you more of them. Or if you use Assault Pack, when you throw the Assault Pack down, it's going to give you an extra stim shot as well. Now, after this, I want to talk about perks. The way to look at perks is that there are three different types of perks. Number one is a perk that takes information away from enemies. So, for example, Ghost or Ninja takes information away from enemies. Ghost takes you off the UAVs. Ninja gets rid of your footstep audio. These are, generally speaking, pretty good perks. There's also perks that make your soldier better. So for example, dexterity reduces the motion while jumping. It makes your soldier better. Or flak jacket or tack mask takes away some of the damage from explosives. It makes your soldier better. Then the final type of perk is something along the lines of like tracker or even forward intel. These are the type of perks that give you more information. An example of this is the recon perk, which actually allows you to see through walls when you spawn in. And on top of that, gives you a HUD indicator when enemies are looking at you 
out of your field of view. Here is what you need to know about this. First of all, the combat specialist thing, I really highly recommend using this, especially starting out. The perks that you are given for using three of one color, so for example, all red, make it so that when you get a kill, you immediately heal and move faster. Blue allows you to see through walls and know when enemies are looking at you, and green helps you get score streaks better. They are very, very powerful, and then you are at a disadvantage for not using them. Now, perks-wise, the question is what perks should you use? As a new player, the type of perks that are going to do best for you are the ones that give you more more information. So recon is probably best for new players. The perks that make your soldier better, which are generally speaking red perks in this game, and these are the ones that are going to make more advanced players play better. So base your perks off of knowing that. The final thing is wild cards. As far as wild cards goes, there is one that is far better than all the rest, and it's the one you unlock at the end. It is perk greed, and it is unlocked at level 54. It allows you to have four perks instead of three, making it way easier to get this specialist, and on top of that, allowing you to use two perks in the same perk tier. So for example, I could use Ghost and Ninja, or I could use Ghost and Tack Mask, another good perk that's unlocked at a later level. What this means is I truly believe that perk greed is probably the best thing to unlock when you prestige for the first time as your permanent unlock. If I was picking three different things to unlock for my first three prestiges, it would probably be perk greed, the AS Val at level 55 that it unlocks just because I want to be able to use that weapon. And finally, Stims, which only unlock at level 33, but I always want to have those things on there because in my opinion, they're the best piece of gear in the game. Now, the final thing in the menus that I can give you is your score streaks. You want to use score streaks that are obtainable to you. If you're not a good player, don't go for ridiculously high score streaks. Go for streaks that are going to help you get more kills and raise that kill death ratio. Don't be overzealous and try to go for something crazy like the Dreadnought at 1800 score when you're going on only three kill streaks every game. Now let's move into some more kind of like gameplay style and what you should play the game like if you just simply want to do better, if you're finding yourself struggling. So first off, Omni movement. You got to get used to Omni movement. It's going to be incredibly important. And the tip I can give you for this is basically after every single time you win a gunfight, try to use your Omni movement to move towards cover. Once you're behind cover, then you can stim or get ready for the next gunfight. But just getting used to that Omni movement is going to give you that muscle memory to prepare for that next gunfight and be able to use it when times really get tough. It is new in this game and is going to take a while to learn. But with the settings that I gave you before, it should come to you pretty easily and pretty quickly. Now, this is actually going to be the final tip. Now that we've looked at all the weapons, the score streaks, the settings that you need to use, stuff that immediately is going to become adaptive to you. This one's going to take a little bit longer. This one's not so immediate. It takes a little bit to learn. And that is how you navigate the maps and how you play the game. Call of Duty Black Ops has a different style of map than we had in Modern Warfare. However, playing in a similar way to how you played a Modern Warfare map will still work. And what I mean by that is that if you navigate the map by running straight down the middle, you are exposed in 360 degrees. Someone could be behind you, in front of you, or to all of your sides. Whereas, if you stick to the outskirts of the map and keep your back towards the edge of the map, people can no longer be behind you, which means instead of having to worry about 360 degrees that people can be coming from, you only have to worry about 180 degrees. It's a super simplistic tip that's going to make it playing the game a lot easier. And yes, you may not get in as many gunfights as you would by just running straight down into the middle of the map, but you are going to stay alive longer, get more streaks, raise that kill death ratio, and become a more successful player, all the while learning to win more gunfights and use Omni movement better, which eventually will make it so that if you do run down the middle of the map, you are going to be a better player when you do so. And of course, this is going to change based off of the game mode you're using. Yeah, if you're playing hardpoint, sometimes you're need, going to need to go into the middle of the map. But if you engage from the outside of the map inwards, you're going to have much, much more success. The other thing, and this is only applicable on some maps within Black Ops 6. On Modern Warfare 3 or Modern Warfare 2, this was all of the maps. But in this game, it's a little bit different. There are power positions. Generally speaking, these are positions where you are elevated and you have some sort of head glitch that you can look out off into the distance where you can see a vast majority of the space but it is difficult for enemies to see you 
Some people call these camping spots. In a lot of cases, they are. But other times, they're just elevated spots where you're going to have an advantage on the enemies when you get into a gunfight. Using these to your advantage and knowing where they are on the various different maps are going to be extremely beneficial. And sometimes these are just small elevations. Like on the map Subsonic, using the downed airplanes outside as head glitches is better than using the kind of craters as head glitches because you're actually going to be above people as opposed to below them. And just like Star Wars tells you, you always want the high ground. But anyway, those are some gameplay tips, some create a class and loadout tips, as well as some settings that are immediately going to improve you in game. Hopefully I was able to help you out, maybe raise that kill death a point or two. And if I did, I would love it if you could hit that like button and maybe subscribe if you want to stay up to date on everything Call of Duty. But as always, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. And until next time, peace. We are, we are reaching for the stars.